What is going on guys and welcome back to the YouTube channel. So today I'm going to give you my biggest tips when it comes to overcoming binging. Now this is something that I feel like a lot of people face and sometimes struggle with. It's something that I struggled with so I feel like I've got some experience in terms of how I overcame it. So give my personal experience and some of the steps that I would take to get through that. Now essentially the first thing that we need to do when it comes to this is we need to actually identify why we're binge eating and there'll be a reason for that and it's often deeper than what we think. Sometimes we don't realize what the cause is but you need to really try and reflect and self-identify what it is that's making you want to go and overeat on the food what is it that's causing you to go and grab the ben and jerry's every evening or go and grab the biscuits something inside is triggering that response every time and that's the first thing we need to do self-reflection and self-identifying is absolutely key because you're essentially using food as a vice and you're trying to get over something by putting lots and lots of food in your body thinking that that's the route in terms of doing that and it's not so that's the first thing to think about now for me personally when i come back to my experience with binge eating which was after my competition, like I was doing it because I was lost. I'd been pursuing a goal for weeks and weeks on end for months. My entire life was literally all in on this goal. I didn't get the result that I wanted. I was disappointed. I didn't have another goal set. So I was lost. And that's why I decided or kind of went into this kind of binge restrict cycle for a very long time. Now, obviously there are more reasons physiologically as well in terms of, you know, I was very lean. I was very restricted for a long time. So yes, I was hungry. But at the same time, when I reflect back now, it was a darker period of my life. So mentally, I wasn't in the best place and food was the easiest thing for me to have to try and fix the hole. Now, when I think back, if I had, you know, set another goal, if I had, you know, made sure that there was something I was pursuing afterwards, then potentially I wouldn't have had that issue. If I had set my environment up better, I wouldn't have had that issue. But the first thing is identifying what it is that's causing you to want to go and binge eat. And that's really, really important. You know that maybe it's that you've had a breakup. Maybe it's that you're not happy with your job. Maybe it's that you've had, you know, a death in the family. And these are all obviously sound quite morbid things, but this is often the reason why people are kind of gravitating towards food or alcohol or drugs or whatever to try and get over this so you've got to be strong and really think what it is this drive we need to want to go and do that every single time because until you find that deep reason and go beyond the surface level it's very hard to fix the a kind of issue that's underlying so that's the first thing that you need to do you need to figure out what it is that's causing you to do that and you need to try and figure it out and sit down and reflect on that when you've actually understood the reason you can then actually start to make better decisions of how you can set yourself up for success and the second thing you need to do which leads me on to this point is your environment environment is the most important thing again it's going to help you overcome this issue your environment is not set up for success and when i say that you know you're hanging around with people that are bringing you down and making you feel the way that you are you've got loads of crappy foods or drink or whatever in your house that's just always there so you just go and pick at it this environment is essentially again going to make things very challenging for you to actually overcome the issue so the first thing you need to do is completely eliminate everyone and everything around you that is causing again this poor environment and leading to potentially the binging that's happening so if that's leaving a friendship group you need to do that if that's leaving a relationship you need to do that if that person is holding you back and you're not essentially living your best life and it's causing you to be in this binge restrict cycle which is psychologically getting you down of course you need to make the difficult decisions often, often the difficult decision difficult conversation that we're putting off that needs to happen which is going to essentially change your life then we need to start thinking about our actual environment that we live in now for myself again going back to my own personal story fortunately i live by the like three supermarkets when I had this issue. I had like an Aldi, I had a massive Tesco, I had everything around me. I literally had a in home bargains next door to the gym that I worked at. So my environment was not set up for success. Now, I'm not saying you need to move house, but it often is more challenging when you've got a lot of things around you essentially that make the job harder. But the biggest thing that I would say in terms of setting your environment up is don't buy food you don't need. Don't go to the supermarket and think, oh yeah, that looks nice, it's on offer. Oh, I'll take some of this. Make sure your environment is set up for complete success. You don't need to buy stuff that you essentially don't need to have. And that's one thing I would really say if you live on your own this is much easier just simply don't buy the shit food that's been holding you back everyone's got food which they really struggle to just have a little bit of something without going completely nuclear and having the whole thing those triggers are super important to identify and you need to avoid those foods like the plague like for me it's often things like cereal which I can't control myself with stuff like granola like I can't I just have one bowl and be okay and often when I get towards the end of a photo shoot prep which is what I've just done I can't even have oats in the house because often even if a bowl of oats is going to trigger me it's going to trigger insulin i'm going to go and get more hungry and i'm potentially going to go and binge things like dark chocolate very careful of as well so there's certain foods again that you need to identify at the start that you probably shouldn't have in your house at least for the time period where you're getting over this binging issue it's really important that you set your environment up for success and these things aren't in the house if you do have children or you know you live with your family and obviously they've got food and stuff you need to try and hide that and not put it in eyesight or you know get your partner to put it somewhere that you can't 
see it. And this might sound a bit ridiculous, but we're humans. We are often always wanting to make mistakes. We wake up, we feel different from maybe what we did the day before. We're likely to go and make a choice that we potentially are going to regret. So again, just doing stuff like that where it makes it impossible to go and cheat, to go and binge really is key when it comes to success. So you need to make sure that you set your environment up optimally so that it doesn't lead to you going down that route. And thirdly, and arguably the most important one is accountability. Now, I wish I had this when I had my binging problem because when I did my competition, I left my coach literally straight away. There was no, you know, reverse diet protocol in place. He didn't really tell me what to do afterwards. So I basically just left him and I didn't have any accountability. I had no one I could really talk to about it. And I was just left in no man's land. You need someone to help through this. And it's the accountability aspect that's really, really important. So if you've got a coach that you're checking in with, you can, you know, on a daily basis, send messages to tell him you're struggling tell him you're on track they can hold you accountable better than you can hold yourself accountable you know you'll be doing check-ins you'll be sending photos it's much harder to have the issues of binging when you have someone there that's supporting you that's keeping you accountable throughout the process it doesn't necessarily even have to be a coach if you can't afford a coach at the moment you know go and tell your partner go and tell your mum go and tell your friend look i'm struggling with this at the moment can you please hold me accountable can you help me can you check in with me you know can you make sure that i can get over this issue that i'm facing at the moment? you need to talk to someone even if that's a therapist or someone that can actually help you again identify why the binging is happening and more importantly you know what needs to happen for you to be able to overcome that with constant support and accountability that's something that we really help our clients with because we know that after you've just gone through a dieting phase and got lean for the first time it can be really difficult to control your hunger and your cravings when you've potentially got lean you ask you can get hungry you've not had certain foods for maybe a while but you know pulled them out where you try to get a really really good run in with your diet and it's hard sometimes so that can accountability aspect when you're going through the reverse diet when you're essentially you're trying to get back to maintenance again it's so important we will not work for the client now unless we can help them control the reverse diet afterwards we have a set phase for that where we will work with clients to make sure that they've got that in place afterwards and the last kind of bonus tip that i want to leave you with is i think it's great to actually set a goal after you've got lean so like a goal after a goal now i didn't do this in my competition i essentially just you know got the comp out of the way apart from it being summer there was nothing really there for me to continue my kind of momentum with you know staying in shape i had nothing really there that made me want to stay in shape so as soon as i started binging it was game over now essentially this time around not that i probably would have gone into a binge cycle this time because i'm obviously a lot more seasoned and experienced than i was a few years ago and i know what i'm doing but i've set another goal straight away after this photo shoot that i've just done of doing a high rocks at the end of the year you know so i'm going to sweden we're doing a high rocks team with my brother we're going to smash it and it's something that we've already prepped for we've already got our line highs on a coach we know what we're doing we know what the training is going to look like so we have a goal from a goal yeah we're not just going into no man's land now our shoot's over for next monday we're straight back on it we're going to be trading towards that performance aspect you know we're going to thailand we're going to be doing kickboxing and stuff out there so we've got things in the pipeline that we know that we're doing we're going to stay accountable for and we're not just going to be in this no man's land of getting lean and not knowing what to do afterwards so those are my three tips and my bonus tip that will help you overcome binging get out of the binge restrict cycle overcome it stay in shape not have you know food as a vice and know how to live it healthy lean and happy lifestyle so as always guys i hope you found this video super useful make sure you smash the like button if you have make sure you're subscribing for future videos and i'll catch you in the next video